everyone. What all my favorite people up to? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to know what I'm up to, you have to keep watching this session. So did you know that April month is observed as the Parkinson's Awareness Month worldwide? Yes, that's right. And today we will talk about Parkinson's disease to understand it better. I am Meenal Pathak and I have with me Dr. Ravi, who would help us to know about this fastest growing neurological disorder. And before I begin, I would like Dr. Ravi to introduce himself, please, sir. Hi, Meenal. Uh, I'm uh, Dr. Ravi Gopal Varma. I'm the uh, uh, director of the Aster Center of Excellence in Neurosciences, Global Center of Excellence in Neurosciences, and the lead consultant neurosurgeon. So uh, my special interest is in uh, movement disorders and uh, Parkinson's, and I do uh, one aspect of Parkinson's treatment, that is surgical uh, aspect of Parkinson's treatment. And this month being the awareness month, of, uh, being the pa Parkinson's month, you know, 11th April was the World Parkinson's Day. And uh, so we have a lot of programs um, um, to spread awareness of this disease and uh, how uh, it can be dealt with, how it can be treated. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for Thank having you, me. I would like to start with the most basic and important question for like benefit of all the comments here, like me. What exactly is Parkinson's disease? So uh, Parkinson's disease is a degenerative disease of the brain, uh, which... Uh, uh, causes a certain set of clinical syndromes, you know, and uh, it can affect a person from, you know, from young, you know, as young as 25, 30 years old, even we have seen uh, very few patients with much younger than that. But it starts around that month, that's called the young onset Parkinson's, but most Parkinson's start at the age 30, uh, 60 plus. So uh, this disease is... Uh, uh, characterized by very uh, three cardinal uh, signs. One is a tremor. I think you, uh, it's, it's when the hand moves constantly without your control. Uh, that happens hand, legs. You can have voice tremor. You can have chin tremor. Then you have a rigidity. Rigidity means stiffness. Your hands and legs feel very stiff in Parkinson's. And uh, that leads to bradykinesia. Bradykinesia is where you have slowness of movement. And uh, so the three put together uh, is the cardinal signs of uh, Parkinson's disease. Many other things are there, you know, like uh, mask faces, uh, stooping forward, walking in a shuffle. All these are other features of Parkinson's disease. Okay, so it's safe to say that all these are the early symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Uh, do we need to watch out for any other changes, uh, doctor, that, you know, we as a caregiver, you know, or... Now, who should keep looking out for such changes in the elderly of the family? Correct. So I think the basic things would be slowness of movement. Uh, uh, they're not able to walk fast. They're not able to do things. Mild tremor will start, you know, where uh, the tremor when they carry things would be better off. But uh, when you're resting, the tremor be, is there very clearly. And, um, you know, voice becomes a little low. The face, you know. Uh, the expressions on the face, there'll be a paucity, there'll be a limited uh, amount of expression. You know, suddenly they, you'll find a person who's lost their smiling capacity, uh, dullness in the eyes. And, um, you know, you can make out a Parkinson's patient when he walks into the OPD also because of some stooping of, uh, you know, the gait, the neck is pushed forward. So these are the symptoms that start off with, you know, and then slowly they increase. They start with a very mild face and then they go on increasing and that is when you say okay we need to see a doctor whether it's really parkinson's or it's something like parkinson's okay i think that's actually very insightful for me and i'm uh, hoping for all our viewers so can us tell you uh, tell us like how parkinson disease is diagnosed uh, like what all tests are typically yeah. used to confirm like yes this is how it is like for the diagnosis of uh, parkinson disease as such so uh, Parkinson's disease, uh, not like many other diseases, are diagnosed clinically. That means once you examine the patient, once you check, there are certain uh, tests to be done physically. We do those tests and then we can say, okay, he is a person who's probably uh, Parkinson's disease. 
uh, we don't have one test. Like, you know, if you have a brain tumor, you do an MRI and you find, okay, you have a brain tumor. Right. Here, we do not have that one test as yet. A lot of research is going on, but we don't have one test that would say, okay, this is Parkinson's. But it's a clinical diagnosis more than a radiological or a, uh, you know, or a investigational uh, diagnosis, number one. Uh, number two, uh, we cannot predict who's the person who's going to have Parkinson's, who doesn't have Parkinson's. It can run in families. It can uh, come by itself, you know, without being in families. Uh, it, again, it can also uh, manifest due to certain uh, reasons, uh, like, you know, some toxins can cause uh, Parkinsonism-like disease. Uh, trauma, you know, hitting and banging and those things, you know. Boxers, Muhammad Ali, you know, you've heard of Muhammad Ali, the famous boxer. So because of his repeated uh, injuries, uh, he developed Parkinson's is what one of the theories are why he developed Parkinson's. Okay. So these are the uh, you know causes and uh, the, the tests that we can do, but it's basically a clinical diagnosis more than anything else. Wow, that's quite a, you know insight into this disease. Uh, sir, are there uh, any other risk factors for Parkinson disease that people should be aware of? Yeah, so the problem is we do not know the cause of Parkinson's as yet. A lot of research is going. We don't know why a person gets Parkinson's. We don't, there's no one point reason why you get Parkinson's. So the risk factors, again, as I told you, trauma is a risk factor. Uh, some certain medications can cause Parkinson's, some light disease, not Parkinson's disease, which has to be differentiated, some medications. Um, uh, head injury as a predilection for Parkinson's. But these are all just statistical significance. It is not really very clear about why uh, or what is the cause of Parkinson's and how we can diagnose it by a test. Okay, that's quite informative, actually. Uh, so all our viewers can keep looking out for all these factors. Uh, I'm sure that prevention is definitely better than cure here. And that's that's so true for like when Parkinson is what we are talking about. Yeah. Uh, on that uh, note, uh, you know, I know this could be a very, uh, you know, vague kind of a question, but uh, is there a way in which we can actually prevent Parkinson? Like you said, that there is there is no way in which we can find out that what actually is causing it. So do we have any ways in which we can uh, prevent Parkinson disease? Because I understand this is very painful to see like your parents and, you know, your elderly in the family, uh, you know, not able to recognize you and going through that process and they have a long life to live and if something like this comes in the way so you know it's it's pretty painful for the whole family very true very true but um, as i told you unfortunately unfortunately we have no uh, cause for example um, in, we know covid is caused by um, you know the um, a virus so we know how to prevent the virus wear a mask don't wash your hands you do all these things to prevent but we don't know that one cause that can cause Parkinson's. So we cannot tell, okay, do this to prevent Parkinson's. But if you have a healthy lifestyle, you're doing exercises regularly, you know, generally if you're, um, you know, your body is in sync, that is something that can probably delay or, you know, prevent Parkinson's. But there's nothing that could really say, okay, like a vaccination or like a medication or like a prevention, there's nothing like that. So it is just a disease that is diagnosed because certain parts of the brain are degenerating. And so that like degeneration causes... That topic of head injury, so, you know, I like... Uh, yeah, previous I head injuries. This so head injuries head. Ball, so is it all safe? Because, you know, my son is a big fan of uh, doing a header and hitting the football with the head and all that. So it's all safe, sir? Uh, it is safe to a certain extent, but... Um, uh, they have realized that there's micro trauma that happens to certain areas in the brain because of this, you know, baseball, you know, contact sports and all that. Hitting a ball with a header may not be that much of a problem, but keeping on getting punched on the head, that is that something can keep shaking the brain and you can get uh, Parkinson's or vascular, small vascular insults leading to Parkinson's disease and Parkinsonism. But uh, again, idiopathic, idiopathic Parkinson's disease per se, there's no real cause as yet that we are very sure and we can pinpoint. But Parkinsonism, that means disease, similar disease which looks like Parkinson's but is not the classical Parkinson's is also there. 
So that can be due to many multiple reasons. You know, one is being a vascular Parkinson's when there are small little blood vessels which uh, uh, get blocked to the brain, and that can lead to a disease which resembles Parkinson's, but not not the classical Parkinson's disease. Okay, uh, so I think thank you so much for uh, talking about all this preventive measure. And now that uh, we have talked about prevention, uh, let's, uh, you know, I would like to share, uh, like, ask something about shedding some light on the cure. Like, what is, are the possible treatment options which are available for all possible stages of Parkinson's? Yeah, so Parkinson's basically, once you diagnose it clinically, and you know your uh, you start certain medications. So the medical line is the first line of treatment for Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. And we have got good variety of uh, medications that really help Parkinson's. And we can push the disease as much as possible from uh, you know, manifesting with using these medications. Um, and a newer, newer set of medications are coming in into search and all that. But at some point, what happens is the progression of the disease continues because it's not a cure. We have not yet found cure for Parkinson's. There's no cure for Parkinson's. Only thing is Parkinson's is the disease that is, is a social stigma and it has got uh, bearings. The brain is fine. You know, the brain works normally. So the person is absolutely normal where the brain is, uh, the, the consciousness and the uh, brain is concerned. So they're very aware of the disease and that is why they sit at home. They don't go out because they have tremor. They cannot go to a wedding because they are, they are embarrassed when things happen right in front of the patients uh, in, a, in a party, for example, or a social gathering. You start having tremors. You have start having rigidity, difficulty in talking. So you tend not to go to these uh, parties and to these social gatherings. So you become a social recluse. You sit at home. That is the thing that is really bothersome in Parkinson's. So the medications alleviate these symptoms. So they are, when they have tablets in the initial phases of Parkinson's, they're absolutely fine. They can go have a tablet, go to a party, they're good, and they come back and they can have another tablet. But sometimes what happens as the progression of the disease happens, the tablets have side effects. And side effects are worse than the effects itself. Uh, we, the effect is slow, slow tremor or slowing. But if you have something like dyskinesia, which is occurring with dyskinesia is a, is a syndrome where there's very rapid movement of the hand and leg and body and all that, very violent movements. Now that can happen as a side effect of the drug because the drug you're keeping on increasing. Mm -hmm. That is when a, another modality of treatment is the surgical modality comes into play. And surgical modality is when we put two electrodes in a brain, in the part of a brain, and it's called deep brain stimulation, DBS in short. So we put an electrode in a particular place and then the effects, that is the tremor, the rigidity can be abolished or can be reduced significantly. And the medication also can be brought down. The medication that we're giving side effects can be brought down. And in some, med some people we have come down to nearly 20 to 10 to 20% of the tablets that they were taking and with a very good beneficial effect. So DBS has changed the scenario of Parkinson's treatment because they become uh, the quality of life improves very much. And the newer studies are showing that you know, uh, DBS done in a particular place can reduce the progression of the disease. You know how fast the disease is progressing, it can be reduced too. So that is why the moment you're diagnosed and your diagnosis is confirmed by a neurologist that it is Parkinson's disease, we should start thinking in terms of DBS because that's called the early STEM study. It's a new study where the earlier you do it, you know, post five years, okay. the better it is because the quality of life improves and the progression of the disease also comes down. Okay, so the way you are explaining, sir, it sounds very helpful for the patients, uh, like, which leads to my next question. So uh, this deep brain stimulation, uh, it's recommended to every Parkinson's disease patient uh, like that? That's a very good question. So uh, it's very, very important to select the right patient. Every Parkinson's disease patient will not benefit from DBS. But the people who would benefit from DBS are truly going to be benefited. So how do you differentiate the two? That is when you need to meet a movement disorder specialist, a neurologist who's got special interest in movement disorders, because they would evaluate the patient 
they would do something called a dopa challenge test they would see the the psychological uh, you know status of the patient they put all these things together and see if the medication like sindopa is helpful and that medicine causes beneficial effects and we are only stopping the medication or reducing the medication because of the side effects that that person becomes a good candidate that is in short but a neurologist does a battery of tests and gives gives you a say a, a statement saying that okay dbs is going to help you this much percentage so if the uh, if they score well in the percentage and they pass and they get a certificate that they are good candidates for dbs it is these patients that dbs benefits so it's very important to get the diagnosis right and to go to the right place because there are many places they will they will just put dbs and then we have seen patients failing because they have not done the analysis properly and then dbs does not work so dbs gets a bad name because the patient selection was wrong so it's very important to, for each and every one to select the right doctor who has got adequate experience in movement disorders adequate experience in treating parkinson's disease nowadays we have neurologists who have got a special training in movement disorders and these are the people who will be able to assess and come to a conclusion that he or she is an ideal patient or an ideal candidate so it's very very important for uh, the person to meet a very good neurologist after that the neurosurgeon comes into play when dbs needs to be done once that is cleared wow doctor that's very well explained i i just love the way you you know you gave it the uh, perfect perspective for uh, you know viewers uh, as a whole in fact in the earlier portion when you explained that these people feel slightly uh, you know uh, uh, conscious about uh, you know going out and attending the social gatherings i think it's become a very important part as all of us as a just a you know part of our humanity or uh, basic kindness gesture that we try to make them comfortable around us and you know we as a persons around them don't make them feel that how they are so uh, would you suggest something for the patients uh, care giver any pointers in this regard yeah so uh, it's important see the parkinson's disease is a social disease it is not just one person who is involved it is the person the person's close relatives the father the mother the daughter the children because it affects the whole system it affects the whole uh, you know social lifestyle is affected in parkinson's disease so therefore it's as important to train and to get the caregivers to understand the disease understand the progression of the disease and to be in tune with what is happening all over the world in tune with what changes are happening within the patient itself so whenever we see a patient we always counsel not only the patient but the caregivers because the patient has the disease now we have to treat, treat him and help him out to get out of the disease that helping is done by doctors physicians and caregivers equally because caregivers have you know the motivation that comes from a doctor is there but a motivation that comes from his own caregiver is more important if the caregiver is negative the patient is not going to improve but the patient is going to suffer and then you know that stigma is attached and then you the loneliness steps in and many things step in so it's very important to rope in the uh, caregiver so that they understand everything they understand how it is a treatment plan that has to go together it's not exclusive it's an inclusive plan the family the caregiver the doctors the nurse uh, everything work together in tandem to give an optimum outcome for these patients with parkinson's disease oh that's actually a very insightful session the way you touched on all the parts like the medical part as well as well as the human part and definitely i am much more aware about the parkinson disease now and i would do my best to extend any kind of a support that i can give to anyone suffering from this disease around me uh, thank you so much dr ravi and it was pleasure to deep dive into the world of uh, you know parkinson disease uh, what is it all about and uh, thank you so much for this informative session uh, the viewers can stay tuned for more such session on parkinson disease and uh, you can also comment here with their views and any questions you have we'll get in touch with you again till then stay tuned and thank you so much sir thank you thank you so much meenal it was very nice 
and I hope the word spreads on what is Parkinson's and how it can be taken and we should not ignore it at any point. Thank you so much. Definitely, sir. Thanks.